The Arctic. Join me on board this discovery yacht into the heart of the Arctic and see some of the magnificent creatures which call this icy world home. From the air, on the ice and beneath the waves. Discover Dr. Scott's Animals of the Arctic, Monday on This Morning. Together forever, Welcome back, everybody. So Actually, the... if we didn't go to Rick Astley now, we'd look so foolish. <laughs> it's time for Queen of Clean, Lindsay Crombie. <laughs> <laughs> time for our second music legend of the morning. Next guest had a career spanning almost four decades with countless hit records to his name. And I just happen to be his biggest fan. It's the incredible Rick Astley. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> We're going to be talking to him next, but we couldn't have him uh, with us today without taking a dance to those legendary hits. Here we go. Rick Astley joins us now. It's Thank so good Rick. to have you on the show. Back Thank on you. the sofa. Nice to be, nice to be on the couch. Oh, what, how did it make you feel watching that? I mean, that's nice. thirty. How old were you then? What was the? Uh, Twelve. No, I was, I was, uh, I was tw <laughs> twenty-one when Never Gonna Give Up came out. So yeah, I recorded it when I was. Quite a lot to get your head around a twenty-one-year-old, isn't it? I know, and um, and also because that that first song just kind of took off everywhere. I didn't really get a chance to uh, to take anything in. It was just it was just doing its own thing, and I was chasing it around the world, you know. So. Well, that song has actually been re-recorded. Indeed. For what reasons are we re-recording? Well, um, I'm doing a campaign with yeah. Specsavers, and okay. uh, but it's not about specs. It's about hearing. And they got in touch and said, look, we want, we want to make people aware of how that's all changed and the thing, and take away some of the stigma from wearing hearing aids. Some of my friends have hearing aids, and I kind of think we're in a new world where no one thinks twice about wearing glasses as if mm -hmm. that's a stigma thing. But, yeah. as, you know, you remember the old, when you were at school and you got the glasses that you were given at school and it yes. was all a bit. So I think they just want to move that forward. And obviously it really matters to me because I've spent my whole life relying on my ears to actually do all that nonsense. Do you know what I mean? So true. And everyone I work with, you know what I mean? So it's a, a massive part of my life. And so do you struggle with any hearing issues at all? Yeah, I actually, because of this, I actually went to have my ears checked. But I have noticed over the last few years, and we all have in-ears when we, when we play live, and I've been turning them down over the past four or five years because I've noticed that it's been too loud. I've come off stage yeah. sometimes, I can feel it ringing. So anyway, so we re-recorded Never Gonna Give You Up with some very strange lyrics. And basically it's lyrics that people have sent in to them saying this is what we think it is. Which I struggle with because obviously I've been singing that song for 30 odd years. So the lyrics are the lyrics, you know what I mean? But yeah, but it's been a fun adventure to be honest. And I, I do now have hearing aids and I'm just kind of getting on that journey of finding out when is good for me to use them. It's usually in social situations where yeah. I can't, I'm not hearing a conversation at the other end of that the dinner table. That register kind of thing sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah love... And I'm sure it's been affected partly by my age, I'm 57, but also I think because I have been around a lot of loud music. You yeah. Know, so. And true. I guess the in-ears now probably weren't, back in the day, they weren't the same quality, were they? I mean, no, they're pretty they amazing. they smaller now. as well? They're tiny. I mean, they're, they're literally tiny. Um, but also, I think the quality of them is unbelievable. The technology in them is unbelievable. A really good friend of mine, who used to be an engineer and producer, actually works at a hearing aid company, and he designs the systems oh, wow. for them and everything. So I've been talking to him for some years as well. So, yeah, it's kind of... Um, it's going to be interesting, because the, the more I've started to use them, you know, going to social things more than anything, um, I haven't started using them for anything to do with work because obviously I have to put something in my ears mm -hmm. to, to yeah. work almost, you know? But they are well, unbelievable. My, my father-in-law in Norway has just changed away like he's 91. He, he answers his phone with him. He's just really? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're incredible. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. It's a totally different world, I think. And I think that's, again, from an awareness point of view, we've done something fun with the never going to give you up thing, but it is a serious thing for a lot of people, you yeah, know? And I think there's a stigma to not wanting to go and get checked and yeah. people leave it for years before they actually do yeah that they can do something about it. I know loads of people who don't want to wear them because of the stigma of yeah, it. Yeah. Let's have a look at the re-recorded version.
Yeah, that's my favourite one, that, to be honest. Yeah. Listen, the trick, I just yeah. watch half an hour of that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. We could do, no, well, we could do it with all your songs. Well, Peter Kay used to do it when uh, I went out and opened up for Peter oh, some years so ago. When he used I've to do that. the thing. It's hilarious, man. It's, it's just really so funny. Yeah. Listen, we have to talk Glastonbury, cos you were... I mean, you, you literally, you own Glastonbury. It was just like... Thank I mean, you. You're, you're, the, you're the act that stole Glastonbury. You were so good. Thank you. I had a great time. It was absolutely amazing. It couldn't have gone any better. I think sometimes you get luck on your side and just everything works out. Um, we had a terrifying moment just before I went on where, where my in-ear pack wouldn't work. And, like, oh four minutes God. before, I'm thinking, OK, this is, you know... And also, we went out at 11.30 to look at the audience and there wasn't one. <laughs> and then at 12 o'clock, it's just a sea of people. You know, people so why, did, yeah. why does no-one turn up early? Because they're in the sleeping bag. Because they're, they're still rolling out of bed, aren't they? Yeah. Bed, <laughs> the first thing they see is the 12 is o'clock spot. Yeah. yeah. When Rick came, I was lucky enough to be side of stage because I was working that day, Radio 2, and, you know, you pass gets you all around mm. places. Oh, I would have been the first one there. I would have been literally waiting he there. Was. You would have walked out and remember like that. You were sensational. <laughs> but it was such a lovely feel-good moment though like everything from doing Harry's as it was to yeah. uh, doing back was it back to black or highway to uh, hell? we did highway to hell yeah 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 I did on one tune yeah I mean I, I, I was a drummer as a kid and um, I kind of think you know I've always I'm always still in love with getting on a drum kit it's still one of the most satisfying things to do in the world I think I always love watching artists at Glastonbury look at the crowd because that crowd is like you're looking down and in your head you're probably thinking most of these people are going to be 40s and 50s and then the first such 10 rows mix. are so young yeah, they know all your mix. words. Well, I, I went to see Texas. Um, uh, basically, I got, I got schooled by Charlene uh, because she, put she just ran the thing and, and it was amazing. So and I was watching it going, I was literally taking notes about how to do, <laughs> how to do Glastonbury. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Because yeah, I've never done it before. What so. makes you more nervous, live performances like that? Or writing new music? Uh, well, obviously, there's nerves in the live thing because things can go wrong. Yeah. And, um, you know, but I also think the thrill of doing live gigs has never left me. And whether it's like getting up in a pub with some friends because it just happens and takes off that way, yeah. or whether it's doing Glastonbury in front of 80,000 people, it's a different set of nerves, but it's still nerves. But I still uh, yeah, love both, both sides. Rick, you've got it when it comes to live. Like, you're, you're like you. stand up funny, you. and you know, you don't, you sort of like, the, the craft and the art's there, and yet you don't take yourself seriously. Well, I don't... You're so I, comfortable. I try to sort of bridge that gap between those videos that we were watching a minute ago and, and what I'm doing today. So I dragged a hairdryer on stage so with me. Funny, I mentioned Is to it? the crew, like, literally <laughs> 10 minutes before we went on, I said, can I have a hairdryer? And they're all looking around at the PA and the lights and everything going, Is that going to fuse that? No, we'll get him a clean <laughs> feed. So they got me a hairdryer. So I did my quiff. Uh, mid song, doing mid song. It, we go back and just start doing this. <laughs> and I just going crazy. because I just think embrace the kind of moment as a, it's a fun thing. You know what a fun thing to get to get to do Glastonbury at my time. The Smith covers with as well with the blossoms. Yeah, there, we did with blossoms. Yeah, which Brilliant. is amazing. Yeah, it was it was absolutely great. gorgeous. I love doing. Let's that. talk about this. Yeah, new Are record. There, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, that photograph is from 1989. I was about literally going to go, and who's that? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's me in 1989, darling. Wow, yeah, I couldn't get in those amazing. jeans anymore, but, yeah. Are we America. there yet? Tell us yeah. about this. Well, I was in America for quite a few months last year touring, and we were on a bus, and we kept going to the front of the bus saying, are, are we, we there, there yet? yet? <laughs> it's like um, it's... And we did, like, 56 gigs um, all over. Um, and then I also started thinking about my age, and at what point do you sort of say to yourself, OK, I've, I've done what I wanted to do, because I have done a lot of things that I wanted to do. Um, but I always think there is a horizon. There's always something to look forward to yeah. and something new. I mean, look at the Stones, McCartney, all those guys who wrote the first page in the book. Um, yeah, so I kind of think it is about that. It's about where I am in life and um, do I feel like I'm there? And you I kind of think... You seem like you're so happy at the moment. I am very There's happy. No I'm, I'm, I'm extremely lucky, you know, and that might come across as a bit cheesy, but I am lucky, you know, and I, and I, I don't ever let myself forget it, you know? Nice. Should we have a look at the new single yes. very quickly? Come on, let's have a look. You better be prepared to me. Never gonna turn it back. Never gonna change the facts. Can't stop this world from turning. The fire's already burning. Never gonna feel the same. Never gonna not the same. You gotta keep believing. Can't lose that human feeling. That is brilliant. What a great video. I mean, it looks like Shot a lot of production phone. went into that. Shot on a phone. We had, like, an afternoon. We just said, look, we've just got to get something done. So my wife and I, we were in Denmark, and we ran off to the beach in the woods, and we just... She shot it all and did this oh, thing. What a great wife. And the crazy thing is, 
The next video is directed by Sir Simon Pegg. Oh, stop it. So, yes, which is like from one extreme to the other, because obviously he's a super talented guy. He's wrote an amazing uh, treatment script for it. And um, we had an amazing couple of days shooting it. And, um, but he, what he brings also is all that years of experience and talent, but he also brings his friends who work on massive movies. Yeah. And so it was just an amazing thing to do. So we've gone from iPhone <laughs> to like the best crew in the world. It's yeah. like sort of like, Once you know. Once it's with your music, it's yeah. fantastic. Are tonight. we there yet? It's you. available to stream and download now. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you. Jesse, see, see you in a minute. Come on, let's start.